This segment is brought to you by Kansas Wheat. Learn more at rediscoverwheat.org. Good morning and welcome to Farm Factor on AgAm in Kansas. I'm your host, Conrad Cabus. Pests are always a tricky problem for producers because of the costs, education, and supply it takes to eradicate them from an operation. That's why a series of sorghum production schools were offered in early February of 2015 to provide in-depth training targeted for sorghum producers, including ones that are having problems with pests in their crops. The schools were held at a variety of locations, and the one Ag Aim in Kansas attended was in Hutchison. And this one was sponsored by several entities with an interest in the sorghum industry. Take a look. I'm Jeff Whitworth. I'm an extension specialist in entomology. We were in Hutchison, Kansas today at the sorghum school, our annual sorghum school. Um, today I was talking about insects that affect sorghum. Uh, probably our most consistent number one pest all across the state as far as sorghum goes and maybe a little bit in corn also is the chinch bug. Uh, the true chinch bug is sometimes mistaken for a false chinch bug but there's considerable differences, especially in the amount of damage that they can do. False chinch bug doesn't really do damage. A true chinch bug really can. The true chinch bug actually is right now is overwintering in bunch grasses or in residue out in uh, some of the fields that have heavy residue. Uh, if the winters don't get too bad, we found that the chinch bugs have been able to survive winters just in residue. Otherwise, they're around the root systems in bunch grasses, the little blue stems, etc. Then, um, you know, probably whenever the wheat starts to break dormancy, the chinch bugs, the adults will move out of the bunch grass and the residue or wherever they are overwintering, and they will move into the wheat. They will start feeding in the wheat. Uh, like I said, it's once the wheat breaks dormancy, they'll start feeding in the wheat probably for, oh, two to three weeks, and then they'll start mating and they'll start laying eggs. Um, and then the eggs will hatch and the little nymphs are red they'll start feeding in the wheat also. Um, then they start moving out of the wheat as the wheat starts to senesce or starts to turn yellow. It starts losing its juice, in other words, so it's not on a suitable host for the chinch bug. And as that starts to happen, they start moving out of the, uh, out of the wheat, moving into the sorghum or corn, whichever the uh, adjacent crop is. And they can do a real number on seedling sorghum and or corn plants, especially in dry conditions. If the, if the moisture is lacking, um, the plants are struggling anyway for, because of moisture stress. They have thousands, literally hundreds and thousands of little um, plant sucking chinch bugs on them. Uh, they can do a number on these plants very quickly. The chinch bug, a native of the United States, is common to Midwest states and has a great effect on producers. The chinch bug naturally feeds on wild prairie grass but when the Midwestern states were settled in the 19th century, crops of wheat, corn, sorghum, and other grains were planted, and they adapted well to these new species as habitat and food. Throughout the 20th century, the chinch bug was a major pest to farmers as they quickly decimated corn and wheat fields. What we normally recommend is as that wheat starts to turn yellow, as it starts to senesce, get out and sample the wheat. If you find one chinch bug in one square foot in your wheat field, um, then delay planting your sorghum or your corn if you were going to plant adjacent to that wheat field. So just delay two to three weeks and uh, you shouldn't have a problem because the chinch bugs, when they're nymphs, they have to feed um, within seven to ten days or else they just die. So if there's no plants there for them to eat, uh, they'll just naturally um, go away and then you can plant your sorghum or your corn and you won't have a problem with chinch bugs. This hog is Hanover Hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. 